Hello basketball coaches and basketball players. My name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today on this channel I am going to show you some great basketball plays that basically don't have any screens at all. So hello everyone, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training. If you're new to this channel, on this channel I show you basketball plays, drills, and skills. So if you like that stuff, hit that like button and subscribe. But anyways, today I am going to show you some great basketball plays that have zero, zero screens at all. Zero screens against man-to-man -man defenses. Basically, I had a man or a person called Richard Stark comment on one of my last few videos. If I remember, his comment is right there. And... Basically, uh, he was saying that in his league that he coaches in, they have zero screening ability or the uh, allowed, like zero at all, allowed at all, and they don't play zone defenses. So I'm assuming that this is a very young age as well as uh, basically the the fact that uh, maybe they're still learning how to play basketball that kind of thing so you want to go through some very simple motions that's going to help them later on down in their life of playing basketball so let's get down to the clipboard let's check these out also go check out my instagram if you haven't already it's al's b ball a l s b b a l l and also uh, if you want go support me on patreon as well the links are in the description below basically trying to make this a full-time gig but also build my own indoor basketball court to make even better basketball videos for you guys but let's get down to the clipboard and let's check out these basketball plays okay so what we are running right here is a four out offense uh, this is going to be a very simple motion type offense where basically player one is going to pass over to player four and he's going to cut towards the rim now player five is not going to be screening for him we've probably seen that play before now, if you are playing in a league that has screening allowed, Player 5 could totally set a screen for him. Uh, but if you are not, uh, Player 5 is just going to be acting like he is there asking for the ball. And we're going to have Player 1 cut towards the rim. Hopefully that Player 1 is going to be faster than his defender so that this could be just a quick pass in for a layup. If it is not and he is totally covered, then what's going to happen is Player 3 is going to fill that spot. Player 2 is going to fill player 3's spot. Player 1 is going to fill player 2's spot. And now what's going to happen is we're going to have player 4. He is going to pass to player 3. And he's also going to cut towards the rim. Now because he is the farthest out player on this side, he's going to pop back out. So now we're having two options. We could hit up player 4 for the pass in deep for the layup. Or... When he cuts back out, he may be able to have player 4 stumble, and this could be a shot as well, either from the 3 if it's an older team, or the, a team that has the ability to shoot that far, or even maybe from the, the mid-range area as well. So those are both options. Now, if your team has issues shooting from long distances, once that shot is up, he better be following his shot and everyone else better be running in trying to grab that rebound because believe me, if you want to grab more rebounds by chasing down more missed shots, you're going to grab more rebounds, which is key at getting more rebounds. Once player three gets that ball, if he passes to player four, it's going to be the same thing as what we just ran. So what we're gonna do now is let's say player three passes over to player two. Player two is gonna get that ball. Player five is going to then switch sides over to this side. Meanwhile, player five could be open at any time and he could just turn around and take a shot. If he's open and his player is like, let's, let's say uh, like sagging off a bit into the key, definitely pass it into him for a quick shot because definitely easy shots are number one and key at winning a lot of games but um, once player three makes that pass he's going to cut in front of his man and he's going to cut towards the basket now if player three is open for that layup definitely hit him up for a pass if player five sags off because let's say player three isn't necessarily the fastest player ever again like what i was saying pass the player five for the shot Player 5 is kind of our safety where if his man sags off to play help defense, then he's going to be open and it's going to be fantastic. Now once player 3 cuts towards the rim, he is going to pop back out to that side and player 4 is going to go and fill in his spot. Now the same thing as what we ran on the other side, we're going to run on this side now where we're going to have player 2 pass to player 1, cut towards the rim. Again, if player 5 sags off, pass to player 5 for the shot. And 
if player two is open, definitely hit him up. But again, same thing as we did on the other side. Uh, we're just going to do it on that side. So now in our second play, what we're going to have is basically a three out two in offense. And we're going to have these two players continuously switch spots and switch sides. And at any time. So basically every time there's a pass, they're going to move. If there's not a pass for more than three seconds, they're going to move again. So every three seconds, they are moving at the very minimum. We're going to have player one, let's say, pass to player three first. Player one is going to cut towards the rim and pop out to this side. Now, if he's open, definitely hit him up for a shot. But because there was a pass to this side, what we will do is have player four blue come to that side and player five go to that side. And then what we will have is player three will then dribble up to back up to the top. And we're going to have player one fill player three's spot. Now... If one of these two players is open, hit him up for a pass. Even when the ball was over here, hit him up for a pass. Player 3 is going to pass over to that side. We could have these players now switch where player 5 goes up and player 4 goes down. And player 3 is going to cut down towards that side again. If he's open anywhere in these areas, definitely hit him up for a pass. If player 5 is open when he's coming up top, then player 2 is going to pass to player 5 for the shot. And now once player three gets out to that corner, if he's not open for a shot, we're going to have player two dribble up top and we're going to run the same exact thing. These players continuously switch and these players pass, cut, fill, and then repeat. Now, of course, the favorite for players or teams that cannot run screens is basically a pass and cut and then a fill, just like that, where whichever side you pass to, you're going to cut and fill in the other direction. Just sort of like a clock. Just like that. Now, if the ball is in the corner, I've shown videos on this before, so uh, I wouldn't necessarily, uh, I'm not going to necessarily go very deep into this play because I have shown it multiple times before. But if it is in the corner and he passes out, he's going to cut along the baseline and what, what could happen, there's two different options. He could go cut towards the baseline and pop back out, and he may be open. Or what I like to do is have both base, baseline players switch sides, where now he may be open over here, or there may be a player open underneath the rim as well. So there's a few different options that you can run with the five out as well. Richard Stark, I hope that these basketball plays help you and your team as well. Of course, like always, if you have any questions or if you have any requests, leave them in the comments below. Go check out my Instagram. Go check out my Patreon. Also, go check out the subscribe button in that corner and uh, go check out the, uh, the suggested video over in that corner. Uh, and I will see you guys again tomorrow for another daily basketball video.